Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is the first video about Android 12, which is my latest Android project. From the name, um, you'll be able to tell that there have been 11 previous Android or robot projects, which you can find on my website. This is the 12th one, which I'm hoping will take the best aspects from the previous ones. There's more information on the website about this in words and pictures. Um, xrobots.co.uk slash android12 you can find the link in the description to this video um, this android is going to be 3D printed if you want to know more about my 3D printer have a look at my 3D printing playlist so I've originally uh, designed these pieces and these are designed in Autodesk 123D which is free software and these are pieces for the foot so this is the main foot which will be the same for both feet and then I have uh, left and right toe pieces. So the soles of these are also going to be separate pieces, which as you can see are slightly curved. And those will be coated with um, some foam so that it can, comp can comply with the ground. So um, it's probably best if I print these pieces out and then when I've got the physical pieces, I can show you some of the other parts I've got and how those are going to work together. All right, so here come the toes of the feet. Um, I'm printing in uh, with 10% infill. So you can see the honeycomb pattern it's drawing there. Um, there's also some pilot holes through them to attach the soles on which it's printed there roughly. And if you can quite see the uh, pads that it's printed for those. So I'll also be using support material, which is also a honeycomb infill for the overhangs and that's mainly where um, there are holes through for the rods for the hinges it's just printing one of those, the bottom of one of those now by the look of it so we'll come back um, in a bit, it's going to be about an hour to print those parts and we'll see how we're doing Okay, so here are the parts. Um, there's a few issues, so you can see there's a bit of a problem here on the top surface. The, uh, if we hold this up to the light, you'll be able to see the honeycomb inside, um, which, as I said, was 10% infill. And what's happened, in fact, is that some of the top layer has just fallen in the holes, which I wasn't expecting. Um, so I think for the other parts, I'm going to use a 10% infill and have uh, four layers on top instead of whatever I've got there, which might only be two. So for the very top surface. Um, nonetheless, the parts are extremely rigid due to the honeycomb. So they're more than good enough mechanically. So those are the, obviously, the right and left toes. Um, so for some reason, the holes on the inside where I said do infill for overhangs, it's filled them in with um, a bit which you can just snap or drill out. But the other sides, it didn't do any infill. But those holes have come out perfectly well, which are four mil holes, and that's for the hinge to the rest of the foot. So um, let's print the rest of the parts, taking that into account, and we'll see what we end up with. So those are the, mains, uh, the main pieces of the feet. We'll see that's a denser honeycomb, so we'll see how those turn out. So I had to stop those prints halfway through. I had a couple of issues, um, mainly with the prints lifting off. Look at that. So that should be flat, and you can see um, that basically they've really lifted off. So these are quite long pieces, and as the layers of um, ABS build up, obviously as it cools it shrinks, and that builds up more and more tension. So the printer's got a heated bed, which is supposed to prevent um, curling like that. Um, in this case, um, obviously something's gone wrong. Now there's probably two reasons for that. One, this is a much denser print. You can see that's um, uh, it was 10% infill as opposed to 20%, which means there's more plastic to build up, although it shouldn't have really caused that to curl like that. Um, the other thing which I actually think caused the issue was that Basically I had the printer on an empty chest of drawers which was quite noisy because it amplifies all the vibrations of the printer moving. Um, it's basically sort of nine at night at the moment so I put the printer on the floor so that it wasn't so noisy and doesn't annoy my neighbours. Um, it's quite cold weather at the moment so what I suspect has happened is that being on the floor it's quite draughty and cold air has blown across the piece as it's printing um, and that's what's caused the cooling and um, 
cause problems cause problems there. So I'm actually printing another one right now, which I'll show you. So I've got the printer on the floor still. I now have the printer surrounded in pillows to stop drafts. Um, I don't know if you can see, but I've actually got a 5mm brim on the piece. So around the bottom of the piece is um, basically a kind of um, a section all the way round that's 5mm wider to help stick it to the base. So you can actually feel the warmth in here from the, the heated bed, so I suspect as I say the draft had caused the issue. So, and um, obviously I'm printing that with 20% infill again as well. So I'm not sure out of the three which one um, had caused the issue, but hopefully that one's going to be fine. It's probably almost all the way through the, uh, or at least the lower layer of the piece. Um, again, I've got four layers being built up on the top surface due to the holes in the toes. But um, so far that hasn't lifted off the bed, so we're gonna let that print and see how it turns out. So I now have the successful prints of the main foot pieces. That's the brim I was talking about, which I've cut off on that one. So there's the foot and there's the toe, and obviously they'll hinge here. Still been a couple of issues on the top surfaces here. Um, with the denser infill, I didn't have that issue. These are fine. So you can see that's quite a tight honeycomb. With this one, um, as before, it's the much bigger honeycomb, it's only a 10% infill, and basically watching it printing, it looks like basically the printer's fine to bridge the gaps, but it's printing quite quick and sometimes the next line of filaments it puts down pulls the previous one up and they all get rucked up and um, then the head crashes into them on the next pass and it makes a mess. Um, I think if I printed that more slowly, some of it's not too bad, if I'd printed the top layers more slowly, which is an, op an option in Slicer, then it probably would have been fine. But um, basically the parts are full of honeycomb, so they're incredibly rigid and uh, more than functional. So I just need to trim the brim off that one. Um, what we've got, of course, is the, the toe hinge, as I say. The idea is that the ankle will hinge about this point. There'll be a servo somewhere on the leg which will um, have a tendon to the back of the back of the heel there. And then I've got these radio control shock absorbers, which will come to this point and up to the leg, so that as the leg bends forwards, it's got some resistance there. So basically we've not got the entire weight of the Android levering around this point, um, putting its load on the servo motor, it's got this extra, extra spring to take the load. And when it moves the foot the other direction, so effectively tipping it forward, the servo will release the top of this, so then it can, it can extend past its end stop. So once I've built the ankle part, that'll be a bit clearer. Uh, for now I need to go on and print the soles of the feet, which occur, are curved in this direction, um, so there's no actual ankle joint that bends side to side. It's all done by the curves of the feet, which will have some soft foam on the bottom so they comply with the surface to be walked on. So let's get those pieces made. So I've printed the first sole. This piece has come out absolutely perfect. So again, I had the printer surrounded in uh, pillows to stop drafts. I've got a five mil brim on the piece. Um, and this piece is the denser 20% honeycomb infill. But the top surface, as you can see, is absolutely fine and the bottom is completely flat, it didn't lift at all from the bed. So um, that's one of the best large prints I've had yet. Um, it's just unfortunate that it goes that way up and goes underneath the foot. So no one's ever going to see it, and uh, the surface that is really good is going to be covered in foam. So uh, basically that makes the compliant surface for the sole of the foot. So I just need to print the others and then we can start putting things together. So all my pre uh, parts are printed, there's the bottoms of the toes and now I'm just gluing some foam on so I've got some foam here which I think is LD33 which would be 33 kilograms per cubic meter if I had a cubic meter it's five mil thick and I'm using some general purpose quality Wilco brand which uh, Wilkinson's is a shop in the UK which sells household stuff all-purpose adhesive it's solvent based um, hopefully that'll soak into the foam and stick it right down so I'm just going to uh, wait for that to go off and then stick that on and do the same with all the parts. Um, and then we can use the pilot holes which I made in these. Just 
stick the soles onto the pilot holes which I made in these pieces. So um, I've got some thin wire over here which we'll use just to key those together. And we can stick the two surfaces together and that will give us our feet with our compliant soles. So I've glued foam onto the bottom of all these pieces which are the very slightly curved soles. I've also put these bits of wire on into the pilot holes so that I can stick those uh, straight onto the toe. So if I can find the corresponding one, some corresponding holes, if I line those up correctly, yeah, there we go. So there's the profile of the foot. So I just need to glue those together. So I'm only going to use um, basically a light bit of super glue just to fix those together where the uh, where the pegs are. And that's so if I need to get them apart, I can. So for instance, the uh, this idea of having rounded bottom feet doesn't work out. I can go back to flat feet and make the extra missing ankle joint instead. Okay, so I've got the sole stuck on both feet. And I've also hinged the toe with a bit of 4 mil studding, which I've just stuck in there with a couple of washers to keep the spacing correct. So the next thing is going to be building the ankle assembly. And the plan for that is going to be uh, basically two bits of studding. This isn't studding, but let's pretend it is, uh, which make the actual shin, so um, one either side. So I just need to make a 3D printed piece here, which hinges it this direction and allows me to screw in the studding. And then basically the spacing for the servo and the shock absorber I showed you uh, will be able to be adjustable up and down the studding by moving the nuts. So that makes the whole thing reconfigurable. Obviously this is quite experimental. Um, so being able to change it as I go is going to be quite useful. I've also got to design um, a module for the front where I left these four holes I mentioned at the beginning. And that's going to have some form of pressing down on the toes. Um, for that motion, probably with a servo, possibly passive, possibly with springs or something adjustable with springs. We'll have to see how it goes as we build the Android up, which is why I've left that and just left four pilot holes so I can fit um, a module on or interchange modules in the future. So next time I'm going to be designing and printing the actual ankle joint and the, the rest of the lower leg. And then after that, the knee module. All of this is going to be quite modular. Hopefully the next video I'll just be putting the parts together. Now I've sorted out the 3D printing. These are probably the biggest parts, so I shouldn't have too many issues uh, with building smaller modules, which is a plan going forward. You can check out some pictures of this on the website at xrobots.co.uk slash Android, uh, Android 12, in fact. See you next time.